What's up, everybody? Brooklyn Core Cutters here. How's everybody doing today? I hope everyone is well. Today's topic is Women History Month. My wife and Miss Carol um, wanted to share something with y'all guys, and I'm going to let them take over from here, and I will be around. Yeah, ladies. First of all, we would like to welcome everybody to our show for our Women's History Month. We thank you for coming. We thank you for uh, supporting us. Um, and if you, if, if, you, if you like the show, give us a thumbs up. Give us a show of some love and some support. Okay, I'm going to start it off. And the woman that I chose for this month, one of the women that I chose for this month was uh, Maya Angelou. Um, she she really 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 um, impressed me. Um, she um, Maya Angelou was a poet, and she also um, she got her edu college some college education from um, the Wake Forest University at Winston Salem, North Carolina. Um, she was at the Bill Clinton's inauguration where she um, quoted a poem and the poem was called On the Pulse of Morning. Um, she, she was awarded several awards for her writings. She was also a director. Um, um, but what impressed me about her was when, when she was, just to give you a little background on her, mm -hmm. um, when she was eight, um, she was raped mm -hmm. by her mother's boyfriend. And um, during that process, uh, she, she told, okay? And, and the person was um, tried and convicted of it. And then they, they released the man. And when they released the man, the man was murdered. Mm -hmm. And she felt like by her speaking and telling her the truth that it caused this man's death and she, she wouldn't speak for five years because she believed that her voice killed him. Mm -hmm. And in a statement, she says, I killed that man because I told his name and then I thought I would never speak again because my voice would kill Mm. Anyone, yes, and I, I looked at that by that um, happening to her, um, the rape and everything, and by her speaking up, it kind of, kind of did something to her mentally, and that's why she closed down. You know, but as the years progressed on, she she talked, she began to speak again, and when she found this, when she finally did spoke. Um, and she had a whole lot to say. <laughs> and um, she said, there is no agony like bearing an untold story inside of you. Right. And, and that, that, that was an example, you know, you have to speak up, you know. Right. And, and I love her poems. She, she wrote the poem, um, Why the Caged Bird Sings. And that was um, a depictment of her life and what she had been through. Mm -hmm. um, right. And she wrote another one that I liked. Uh, let me see. What was it? Still I Rise. Right. And, and what I got out of that poem is the more you're knocked down, you got to have that determination to rise again. Mm -hmm. Correct. Though they knock you down, you're still going to rise. No matter how many times you get knocked down, you're going to rise. And and she, 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 she got knocked down pretty much when she was growing up mm -hmm. but she she grew she grew beyond that and she right. felt who she was right. um and i heard you said that she that I heard you said that um uh she uh felt guilty for um for saying something in the in the and if i'm not mistaken you said the man got uh, executed no they released him they released him, and, and what when he got released, uh, he was murdered. Oh, oh! So the public, um, something happened to him in the public. Yes, and, oh. and she felt like by her speaking up, mm. that her voice, her voice, she spoke it, she spoke the truth, mm. and it killed him. 
Wow. She blames wow. herself. And, and you know, when a child is like eight years old, they mm -hmm. take things to heart. Right. And, right. And she right. took that to heart. And, and it, it, did, it, it affected her mentally. Mm -hmm. And that's why she refused to speak for five years because she mm -hmm. felt like if she spoke any more truths about others, that the same thing would happen to them. Okay, for those who um just um join in the chat, what is the person name that uh, we we discussing at the moment? Maya Angelo. Maya, Maya Angelo. Maya Angelo. Okay. Yeah, I just want everybody to know that's um joined us. We got eight people watching, so I just wanted to let them know uh, exactly what we're talking about. You know, it's Women History Month, and um we're acknowledging well uh, my wife and Miss Cow acknowledging um women uh that was um going I mean, through yeah yeah y'all can say it better than me but yeah y'all right. go ahead yeah go ahead and she she had a lot of comp a lot of accomplishments mm. um because in 1959 at the request of dr martin luther king angelo became the northern coordinator for the southern christian leadership conference Mm -hmm. uh, from 1961 to 1962, she was a was the associate editor of the Arab Observer in Kalair, Egypt. Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, this was it was the only English language news weekly in the Middle East. And from 1964 to 1965, she was a featured editor of the African Review in Accra, Ghana, Ghana. Mm -hmm. And then she returned to the United States in 1974 and was appointed by Gerald Ford to the Bicentennial Commission and later by Jimmy Carter, the Commissioner of International Women of the Year. She accepted a lifetime appointment in 1982 as a Reynolds Professor of American Studies at Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Um, okay. She, 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 she was a very strong person because you got to have a strong spirit to survive through all that she went, went through. Mm -hmm. um, and, and she survived and she withstood it all, no matter what came up against her. Like the poem says, still I rise. Mm -hmm. Every time she got knocked down, she, she rose back up, even though she was being, um, what, oppressed, mm -hmm. um, put down she still rose she rose above all her back sets uh and that was my first one and jazzy okay i'm gonna do um dr helen rodriguez uh she was a pediatrician uh educator and she was for women's rights she was born in new york city and she earned her md at the university of puerto rico and in 1960, she helped establish the island's first center of care for newborn babies. In 1970, she became the head of the pediatrics at Lincoln Hospital in, South, in the South Bronx uh, in New York City. And she brought attention to the mass sterilization of Puerto Rican women and their reproduction rights. She was the first Puerto Rico and Latina president of the uh, American Public Health Association and she was awarded the Presidential Citizens Medal in 2001. So this is Dr. Helen Rodriguez. Mm. Good, good. So I, I, you know, I thought she really did great, you know, when she was here. Uh, she made sure that the women weren't being sterilized. These are, you know, women that were being sterilized, that they couldn't make babies. And mm. she brought attention yeah. to that. Yeah, so I thought this was one great uh, woman in history. Yes. Okay. Okay. And the next um, woman that I chose was Betty Friedman. Mm -hmm. um, she was born in 1921. She died in 2006. Um, she was a journalist. She was an activist for women's rights. And she was co-founder of the National Organization for Women. Um, Betty uh, Friedman was one of the early leaders of the women's rights movements in in the 1960s because in the 70s because you know a lot of times women weren't uh, created well not created but they weren't treated equally mm -hmm. and um and her 
And her bestseller was in 1963, the book, the name of the book was The Feminist uh, Mystique. It gave voice to millions of American women frustrated with their limited gender roles and it helped spark widespread public activism for gender equality. Mm -hmm. um, she she fought for the equality of women in the as in the workforce as well as I would say like in hospitals whatever you know women wouldn't treat wouldn't you do the same job but you wouldn't get in the same pay right and you wouldn't get uh, promoted as if you were a man. Um, she was born um, Betty Norma Gold Goldstein. Mm -hmm. um, she she was born February the fourth, nineteen twenty one, in Peoria, Illinois. Right. Um, and her her father was a Russian immigrant and a jeweler. Mm -hmm. Her mother was a Hungarian immigrant who worked as a journalist until Betty was born, and then she mm -hmm. stopped working. Um, she she graduated. I'm gonna try to say this right. Sum summa cum laude. Summa cum laude. Summa cum laude. Uh, psychology graduate of the Smith College in 1942. Um, she spent years on a graduate fellowship to to train as a psychologist at the University of California of Berkeley. And there, because the way her name was spelled was B E T T Y E. She dropped the E off her name. Mm. And, and um, she 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 fought for the equality of women because she observed how women were being treated in the workforce as well as in different areas, and the women didn't have a voice. And she she um, co-founded the National Organization for Women, and she she did a lot for women to have a voice today. Mm -hmm. And that's why I chose her. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go with um, Charlotte Ray. Uh, Charlotte Ray, was, her father was a minister and um, he was the editor of a newspaper. And her mother helps uh, slaves escape on the Underground Railroad, which people didn't even know that. Right. And uh, together they made sure all their children went to college. Mm. Okay, um, she lived uh, in New York City, but she moved to Washington DC where she went to school uh, for law. Mm -hmm. When she went to the school, it was all male school. So she put her name as C.E. Ray. And when they found out who she was, they uh -huh. did let her into the school. And it was an all male school. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So she, uh, was the, she was the first woman in the first all male and, school? Correct. Okay, okay. And they let her in. Um, she did graduate. And uh, she, like I said, she was the first uh, black woman to graduate from the law school and was an all male school. Mm. And she wow. was also, I know that she was, was kind of rough on her, but you know, to be yes, all male also, school. She was teaching as she was going to law school. Mm -hmm. right. and, she, and she did graduate. She did graduate from the law school. Okay. So I, wow. thought that, that was a good, that, I thought that was a good person that we would, you know, be able to speak on. Yes, um, and that's that's why I chose um, Maya Angelou and and Betty Fried Friedman. Mm -hmm. Cause they, if it wasn't for them, we would not have any type of rights whatsoever. Not even in the workforce. Not even anywhere as 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 women. Right. Um, and, and there there were women that fought for these rights, and we need to acknowledge them. Right. right. That's right. We need to acknowledge them. And as you were speaking about Maya Angelou, um, her book, Why the uh, Birdcage Sings, is yes. a fantastic read. It's yes, it is. Read. It is. I would recommend that to anyone and to, to know a little bit more about her and why she wrote the way that she did, mm -hmm. you know, and how she represented because she also fought for um, women's rights, too. Right. And... Um, she headed up a lot of different things and I didn't in my in my research I didn't know that she was a producer and a director. I didn't know that. Yes. Yes, she was. You know, I I, I said, wow. She she did a lot. 
and there's a lot that a lot of people don't know. Right, like um, me. I definitely didn't know nothing about this. I, I mean, you know, one thing I got to say, I like the topics that y'all be um, talking about because um, a lot of this stuff I never knew nothing about. So I appreciate y'all taking your time out and to share, you know, um, this with everyone. Mm hmm I, I'm, I'm learning too because I, I just thought she was a poet um, right. until I went and did the research and I found out she was more than just a poet. Mm -hmm. um, she was um, uh, um, head of commission, different commissions, uh, the Christian leadership thing. I didn't know that. I didn't know that mm -hmm. she was a director nor a producer. I didn't know any of that. Right. Right. It's really good to look into a lot of different things. You know, do your research. Because a lot of people made history and a lot of people don't know about. You gotta remember when we were in school, we didn't we weren't taught about black history at all. No. We were mm -hmm. about black history. So people really need to look up on on topics like that. Mm -hmm. And we weren't we didn't know about different women that changed history. Yeah. Correct. We, we Correct. didn't know none of that, you know, and in and, and doing this research, I found out there's several, there's over, there's over a hundred women that changed history. Hmm. Um, and I, did, I didn't know any of that, you know, they spoke about some, but not all, but there was, there was a right. massive um, number of women that changed history. Hmm. So my, my next one is... I'm gonna try to pronounce her name right. She is um, American Indian. Her name was Sarah Winnemucca. Sarah Winnemucca. Mm -hmm. uh, she was an author and an activist and a writer. Um, uh, Sarah Winnemucca was an author, editor, interpreter, and military scout who advocated for the rights of the Native American mm -hmm. uh, community. No. Uh, she, 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 she saw how her people were being treated and she didn't like the way that they was being treated. And her mom wanted her to learn the ways and customs of the um, English. So she s suggested that she go away to school and she went away to school and um, her dad was a chief and um there, they were Paiutes, Paiutes, right. yeah, Paiutes, and um, she went away and she went to school and she she got involved in advocating, being an advocate for the American Indians and, and their rights, because mm -hmm. um, they were like in um, reservations, but okay. they were being their rights were not being um, respected. Right. And she she stood up and she um, fought for their rights. And she also um, uh, um, scouted for the military. Mm -hmm. And she okay. also interpret, interpreted because she could speak. Um, she she could speak Shoshone. Um, what is the other one? She could speak Cherokee. And they okay. kept a, a lot of times when she was scouting for these mili the military, they would run into um, Indian tribes. Right. And if they didn't have her to interpret for them, they would have ended up not making their journey too. She was kind of like Sacagawea. Right, like Sacagawea, uh, correct. Yeah. Correct. And um, she, she, she 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 learned how to speak English and Spanish, and several uh, Native American dialects. She knew it. Um, she she ended up um, in what town? She was she ended up in Nebraska in 1857, um, and she was determined once more to use her ability to help her people in 17 in 1879 Sarah set out on a tour of California and Nebraska and during which she gave lectures on on their plight and early the following year she came, she campaigned and took to Washington DC where she was able to speak with both president 
Bradford B. Hayes and the Secretary of the Interior, Carl Swites, who promised that her tribe would be allowed to return to the reservation. And But however, it never came to pass. And um, their assurance was later described by, Sh by Sarah as promises which, like the wind, when were heard no more. Okay, okay. Yeah. And very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, she took a stand for for her people and the uh, Native American people. That's yes. very interesting. Very interesting. Um, I, I never knew none of this here. Wow. So I have yeah. one more that I'd like to talk about. Um, she was her name was Queen Anna Nazinga, born mm -hmm. fifteen eighty three, and she died in sixteen. 63. Mm -hmm. um, this was the 17th century. She was the queen of Nadongo. And um, her brother, he was the king, but he had committed suicide. So once he committed suicide, she became the queen. Uh -huh. And she, um, you know, was dealing with, you know, the forces of army. She was doing a lot of different things as a woman back then. We know women back then couldn't do those kind of things. Yes. Doing that, her brother killed herself. She was in charge, mm -hmm. and she also fought fearlessly. And she, you know, she fought for freedom. And she was remembered um, in Angola for her political and democratic, brilliant uh, military tactics. So, like I said, she was, you know, down with, you know, fighting different. Places, yes, and like I said back then, this is a queen in 1563. Black women, uh, black women, period, didn't have no no rights, but yeah, as, you know, as this, this is, I think, this is very interesting. Her yeah. name was Queen Anna Nazinga. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah that is wow. Right. Yeah. It 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 goes to show that women were considered the uh, second class citizens, the weaker person, but there were women that showed that women have strength. Yes. And yes. if there's something we believe in, we're gonna fight for it. That's right. And we're gonna stand we're gonna stand for it and buy it. You know, yeah, we're gonna we're determined. We have yeah. a determination and yeah. and and we should we should um honor these women. We you should. know, 'cause it's it's a multicultural Base. It, it wasn't just one set. It's a multicultural mm -hmm. um, thing, and we all was fighting for one purpose. Right. Correct. Correct. Right. You know, just to give us a voice, and and they 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 did it. I I went through the list of of uh, the, the hundred women, and they that was just a portion of the list. They yes. had um, Mary McLeod McFilton, Shirley Chisholm. Which I yes. remember her. Yes, I do. I she <laughs> she yeah, had I a saying, and she ran for president, the first um, uh, Black American woman that ran for president. Even though she lost, she still run anyway. And her yeah. her her uh, motto was "unbossed and unbought," which she was saying, "I won't be I won't be bossed, and I won't be bought." That's right. You know. That's right. And and I and I I I said wow this is so much I said I can just read on forever right. yeah and, and then I looked up and there was another one her name was Marie Van Brit Britton Brown mm. she uh, invented the home security right and I didn't security? know that yeah yes right I didn't know that yeah. I, you know I'm thinking it was invented by a man you know yeah me but, too um, like, wow. Uh, it was it was her in 1966. Mm. Her and her husband. He did the um, blueprints, but she invented it. Where mm. if some of you, it was connected to your TV, right. you could see people come up to your door when they ring the bell, and right. you could you could oh, ask so, who is it. Yeah, so that's not new then. That, 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 that's not new. No, it's not. No. Wow. And they they and, and she fought to get it patent. At first, mm. they wouldn't let her get the patent but they stood firm on it and she wouldn't sell her invention and her husband stood with her um and they finally allowed them to get a patent 
Mm-hmm. And, and it's and it said in, in in my research it said it was the first CCTV system was installed by Sigmunds AG at Test Stand uh, Five in Germany. Right. They that's when they first tested it, and 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 it, it worked it worked real good. Yeah, and they cool. were I think I I tried to find out where were they from. I think it was from New York. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were from New York. That's what's up. That's what's up. I really enjoy yeah. um, talking to y'all because um, a lot of stuff that y'all be saying, that uh, you know, I don't know nothing about, you know, because like you said, they never really taught us black history in school. So, um, you know, I really appreciate, you know, y'all just uh, taking your time out to make a lot of people aware because there'll be a lot of people watching this video. So um, it is going to matter to a lot of people such as myself. So, you know, I want to commend y'all, you know, for um, taking your time out to uh, share um, what y'all have learned with everybody. Yes, oh. it's, it's good to share because there's a lot of things that I didn't know until I started doing my research. Yeah. And there was y'all so teach- many women. Y'all teaching me a lot. I'm telling you, y'all teaching me a lot. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of this stuff I never knew, you know. Mm-hmm. And now, now y'all got me doing research and I got me looking into a lot of stuff, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm serious as far, especially as far as like um, um the ancestry thing, you know, y'all really right. really got me into that because I'm like, wow, I don't know who I'm related to or who I'm not. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm really looking into it, you know. Yes. And as soon as I get mine set up and organized, um, me and Joyce are going to do a um we would like if you let us come on your show and do uh, a show on the um ancestry.com the family trees because it is i think you're more than welcome i'm gonna tell you i enjoy listening to y'all you know so that's why we're doing this i don't care about who like it or who don't like it i enjoy it so long as i enjoy it and other people enjoy it y'all more than welcome anytime that y'all y'all want to y'all can y'all can come anytime Okay, Anytime. and okay. we we like to thank everybody in the chat for supporting us, um, and we like to say hi to everyone if we didn't get a chance to speak to you. Yeah, Smart TV um, King said, um, "Thanks for sharing that." Thank you, Smart TV TV King. Yeah, he's my friend. You know, you know that's this is what this is about. You know, it's about coming together. You know, and learning. You know, it don't have to be just streaming. It could be anything. You know. Mm-hmm. And that's what I do. I try to share what I learn with anyone and everyone, you know. So um, I'm not going to get too far into too many things because that's not the topic. But uh-huh. anybody that needs my help or wants my help, I'm here. I'm here. You know, and I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to always be here, you know, because I like what I do. And when you like what you do, nobody can change what you do, mm-hmm. you know. Okay. And, yeah, go ahead. Okay, Brooklyn is one more person that I want to speak about. Just a couple yeah, of words. Um, yeah. Her name is Susan B. Anthony. She was born in 1820. Yes. Oh, and 1906. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, she was born to a Quaker family, but she, you know, fought for women's rights, mm-hmm. fought for slavery petitions, um, and she, you know, was anti slavery. So, this is um, Susan B. Anthony. You know, she was an activist, women's yes. rights activist. Yes, she so, was. Um, it's it's a lot of women that have done and made history, and people need to do their research. Yes, on it. Mm. yes. Okay, they, that's, they that's what I would like to say. Um, so, Carol, is there anything else that you want to do or say? Um, are we going to do uh, the giveaway? Yeah, we can do a giveaway. Yeah. Well, okay. How about y'all in the okay. chat? Would y'all like for us to do a giveaway? If anybody like us to do a giveaway, type one. I don't see anybody typing anything, so I'm not too sure. If anybody wants to do a giveaway, type one. If not, we are holding for the next um, yes. segment. We just want to show our appreciation for y'all supporting us. Yes.
I'll give them another minute to type one. If not, we'll save it for the next one. Okay. I see three ones. Okay. Three ones? I don't see none. Yeah, I see three ones. Three ones? Well, I don't see it. Oh, I see why I don't see it. Come on. Sorry, y'all. Um, I don't have my thing on. One second. I have to refresh my page. One minute. Sorry about that. I still only see one. Uh, I see uh, Jet, well, Diva, Diva yeah, TV. Yeah. I see Joseph and Queen. Okay. Hi, Queen. Yeah, hi, Queen. Hi, Queen. Yeah. So, you know what? We're going to, um, I'm going to do the giveaway anyway. You know, those who want to participate, it's okay. Those who don't, it's fine. Yes, so, Smart TV. We do Smart TV. Can we doing a giveaway? Yeah, we'll do a giveaway. You know, I'm gonna be doing several giveaways, but um, we're gonna do we're gonna do a giveaway, and we're gonna do it like this. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna write a number down. I have the number, so it's not too many people. So um, I'm gonna put a number, right? Mm -hmm. And um. No playlist, no mods can participate. Yeah, no mods, no mods. Give me one second, y'all. One minute. Okay. Give me a second, because I got to let people in the Telegram group know um, that we're doing this giveaway, because this is like a, a spare the moment type thing. So um, y'all can elaborate on something now. Just give me a minute, okay? Okay. Okay. Um, do you have any more to elaborate on? Um, well, well, the ones that I picked, I, I've done already. So, uh, um, I, I, I like um, Betty Friden, um, because it, it frustrated her. It, it, okay. it just irritated her the way that um, the rights of women was being pushed to the side right and and she she was determined and she stuck by it no matter what she stuck by it um and 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 even though she was being trained as a psychologist she she broke that she broke the women's rights down in a psychological way and mm -hmm. how it was affecting the women and and and, and she stood up you know because we will be made to feel like second class citizens and we got to stand up, you know, right, she, right. she took a stand and, and, and I, li I liked that. And, and the book Feminist Mystique, mm -hmm. um, I went to the library and, and it, it, that's a very powerful book. It oh, is. really? Mm -hmm. And, and we, we, as my, a, we as a people, we really need to start getting into different things. Yeah, you know, looking different things. Yeah, <clears throat> we as a people do more reading because reading. I mean, you need to get into that also. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of things you can do beside be on a computer doing nothing. You know, yeah. you can do a lot of research. You can find out a lot of things that you never even knew about. Yeah. Okay, y'all. I'm ready. Okay. Um, ready? Okay. Yeah, I'm, ready. I'm gonna do a giveaway anyway. And with how we're gonna do it is right in the future. I'll have it more better um, situated, but I'm just gonna go from one to a hundred. And the first one that types in my number, being that um, I'm the one that got to send it out. I know my number. I wrote it down, mm -hmm. and I will show it to y'all. Right? I wrote it down. So look, let me come. Let me uh take off my thing. So I got my number here on this paper. So the first one that hits this number, I'm gonna turn this paper around, okay? Mm -hmm. And so y'all can see, let me fold it. What's the number that I wrote on this paper? So they know that it's no bull drive here, all right? This is how we're gonna do it. And when I press one in the chat, then they can start putting numbers. Okay, so everybody. Until, until you see that number one that I put, do not put no numbers. Okay, everyone. Okay. Whoever whoever participate is fine. Whoever don't, 
it doesn't matter. But I'm just going to go from 1 to 100, and I'm going to type. I'm ready. I'm going to put 1. When I put the 1, then y'all go. All right, everybody in the chat, get ready. I just get ready. The, I, just oh. the, well, I just put the 1. So the first one that hits the number is the winner. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I got it already. Like, boy, oh, my God. I got it already. And the winner is, I'm going to show it to y'all first before I even um, say it. My number was 72. See it? 72. So now I'm looking here, and I see it says Queen Williams. Congratulations, Queen. Congratulations, Queen. Congratulations, Queen. You're the winner. The number was 72. And then somebody else put the 72 in Diamond Bill, but he but she was first. So congratulations, Queen. Congratulations. So y'all see, I'm gonna show it again. My number was 72. Bam. All right. Congratulations. So, congratulations. Congratulations, Queen. Queen. And yeah, everybody, none of us knew his number but him. <laughs> Yeah. No one. That's why I did it that way. So there no, can't be no discrepancy because other people picked that same number, but she was the first to pick the number. So okay, great, congratulations. fantastic. Congratulations. You know. So is there anything else, you have, um, uh, Queen? Um, you're you're your Queen. You're in my Telegram group also, anyway. So I can get your information from my Telegram group, and then I can um send you send you uh something. Okay. So okay. is, there, is there anything else um, y'all need to talk about before we end this show? Oh, no, we're done with the segment. We're done yes. With it. Okay, yes. I want to thank everybody in the chat for coming through. We're going to have uh, plenty more to come. You know, I really appreciate it, you know, um, those who showed up and show me support, you know, because um, I really appreciate it. So y'all know my motto, Brooklyn Core Cutters, out. 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 Until the next time, y'all.